I always come out here because nobody sits in the front. <laughs> if I could ever design a church myself, the pews would pi pi open up from the front to the back so that all of you people that sit in the back would have to be up front. <laughs> Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts this day be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. When I was growing up in the city of St. Louis, and I was about either one of your ages. How old are you? 11, 10, and 11. About that right. I guess I have to watch how I move around. If I stand here, am I okay? Okay. I can't come up by you. you have to, you're, you're too close to the front. When I was growing up in St. Louis, we had a church that was in the city. And our church was located on this corner, and across this very busy street, anybody here ever been to St. Louis? Okay. Well, the street was Gravoy, so you know it was a very busy street. Across the street, there was another church on this other corner. And those of us that went to our good old Lutheran church, by the way, I never grew up Missouri Synod, I grew up Slovak Lutheran, and we've never been Missouri Synod. You can think about that one for a while. There's this other church across the street, and we were about this age. We were going to confirmation class, and one Friday night our pastor was talking about the Spirit of God and about the Holy Spirit and everything else. And afterwards, a couple of us said, you know, this might be a good time to run across the street to that other church. By the way, the other church across the street was a Pentecostal church. So we snuck over there. It was on Friday night. And we snuck in the back door. Nobody saw us. They were too involved in their worship. They didn't have ushers in the back to keep an eye on who come in, kid was coming in. They were all in the church. And we stood at the back. And our mouths dropped. There were people rolling on the floor. Holy rollers, I think is what we used to call them. We looked at each other and we ran back across the street and we said, I hope the spirit never gets me like that. We talk about the Holy Spirit. This is the birthday of the church. We talk about this day of Pentecost, and we celebrate, and we like to sing happy birthday to the church, etc., etc. But I want you to pay attention to why I changed the gospel reading for today. One of the things you all have to understand is that when I preach, I might ask you questions. When I read the gospel reading from John chapter 20, what day is it? What? It's still Easter Sunday. It's still Easter Sunday. They were gathered in the upper room. They were afraid. They weren't sure what had happened. All the women had told them all these stories and everything else. And suddenly they're in that upper room that Easter Sunday and Jesus appears to them. And those most comforting and powerful words, peace be with you. But then you know the text goes on and then you pay attention to the text and it says, and he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. This is 50 days before Pentecost. What's going on here? Let me give you a little hint about something. The word breathed on them is not a correct interpretation. Are oh, you guys going to come back so, you can, so I can see you out of the corner of my eye? All right, good. By the way, if I do anything wrong in the sermon, I already have one of them is going to take over and preach. <laughs> so they want to make, oh, that's right. They're going like this. 
Back to my text, I'm sorry. The word says breathed on them. But the real Greek word means breathed into them. And I want you to keep that in mind because, see, too often when we hear about Pentecost Sunday and we talk about the birthday of the church and we heard that text from, we hear the story in Acts and what happens at Acts when the Holy Spirit descends upon them, what do we see? Tongues of fire, right? Where are they? They're on top of them, I guess. That's how we like to make pictures of them. But see, what I want us to understand is the gift of the Spirit isn't something that is external. The gift of the Spirit isn't something you put on like a robe. It isn't something you put on like your red dress for today or whatever else. The gift of the Spirit is that gift which is given within us. And it's very important for you to have an understanding of that because I chose this text for today and where Jesus says, and he breathed on them, he breathed into them the Holy Spirit. But there's a unique word that is used for that. That Greek word, which is used in the Greek Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Bible, is used only two other places in the Bible. Now, I could test you and say, where are those two other places? What? You would fail. Most of us would. The first place that word is used in the Septuagint, which is the same word that says Jesus breathed into them in John chapter 20, is all the way back in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 where man is created and God breathed into him. Ah, life. Now if I gave you that one and I know this one, can anybody else figure where the other one is? I'll, I'll give you a hint. The book of the Bible is called Ezekiel. The dry bones. You remember the story of the dry bones? Everybody has fun with that dry bones. You know, you'd like to sing about the neck bones connected to the, oh, you know, get, get that. But did you ever, what you pay attention to is in that text in chapter 39, where it says, where he, God says to Ezekiel, pray that the Spirit would be breathed into these bry bones to give them life, and the Spirit is breathed into them, is the same word. Oh. Genesis, breath of life. Ezekiel, breath of life. To the disciples, breath of life. Wow. You see the Holy Spirit. We Lutherans don't really talk much about the Holy Spirit. We mention his name. He's that person of the Trinity that's around. We talk a lot about Jesus. We talk about, a lot about God the Father. But the Spirit, mm, he's there. But don't you understand how important the Spirit is? The Son dies for us and rises again to give us life. The Father is the one who created and sustains us. But the Spirit is the one who dwells in us and gives us breath and life. You see, that's what Pentecost is about. It's not just a day to say happy birthday to the church. We love that one. And we, I'd love to have a cake with that many candles on it. What is it, 2,000 and something candles? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a cake with 2,000 and something candles on it? You don't think it would be a cake? It would just be all candles? <laughs> Melted frosting, smart kids. Melted frosting. I have to remember that. But 
the Spirit. Now maybe you will have an understanding of how important what Pentecost is all about. And maybe those of you who went through confirmation class, anybody here gone through confirmation class? I can tell you when I, I know when I got confirmed. You know how I remember when I got confirmed? I was confirmed in the last upside down year until 6009. Anybody figure it out? 1961. Turn it upside down. <laughs> That's how much I remember from my confirmation. <laughs> Those of you that remember confirmation, maybe if you understand the dwelling of the Spirit, you understand Genesis, you understand Ezekiel, you understand that, that gift of the Spirit to the disciples that day on that Easter Sunday when he breathed on them and he said, receive the Spirit, who's ever sinned you forgive, they are forgiven, who's ever sinned you retain, they are retained. That gift to the church, that gift comes to you and to me. And how important is that gift? Back to confirmation class. Who remembers Luther's explanation to the third article? Oh, now I'm really testing you this morning, aren't I? Remember how it starts? I believe that I cannot by my own reason nor strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord nor come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and keep me in the one true faith. Even as he calls, gathers, and enlightens the whole Christian church on earth. Wow. Got it? You see what today is about? It isn't just about a birthday. It isn't just another day in the church year. It isn't just a day when suddenly we're going to end the Easter season and we're going into that, oh, that long season called Sundays after Pentecost. You know, next Sunday it turns green and it's green and it's green and it's green and it's green. And it's green. But I hope you begin to understand why. Green is the color of life. The spirit that we celebrate this day, God breathed into us. Remember when you were baptized? Sure. You remember when you were baptized? You were held, poured water on your head? And they were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then at the end of the baptismal service, we give a candle. But even before then, we go and we say, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart. To what? To mark you as one redeemed by Christ. And the correct understanding is that to know that the Spirit of God dwells within you. Wow. It's Pentecost. I get to wear my red stole, but it comes once a year. By the way, just a little side to you on my red stole. If you paid attention to my stole, this is the stole I got when I was in Jerusalem. These are Jerusalem crosses on here. It wasn't a spiritual experience for me. But that's how Pentecost is, my friends. That's the gift of today. That's what we celebrate today. So yes, happy birthday. But more than that, happy dwelling of Christ's spirit within your heart and in your mind. And you remember that thing I just said to you about the spirit and Jesus breathed upon his disciples and he said, if we forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If we retain the sins of any, they are retained. What do you think happens 
some of you weren't listening to me because you already get into it too quick. Why do you think we have the sharing of peace? It's not to say good morning, how are you? It's not just to say God's peace be with you. It's to say, as I'm forgiven, you are forgiven too. That's Pentecost. That's the greeting of peace. That's today. May that spirit that dwells within your heart and your mind guide and direct you through all moments of life, up here and down here and in between. For he breathed on them. Their spirit was within them. He breathes on us, and that spirit is within us. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen.